morning angels welcome to my channel it is like 6 a.m right now i'm so tired my eyes are barely open but i had to make a quick video for you guys i heard this lady's story and it touched me and i really wanted to talk about this let's do a quick shout out to the mug she's cute she's an icon she's the moment let's just get straight into this video if you're new here i'm angelica i'm a lash business and branding coach i've been in the lash industry for the past six years ever since i was 19 years old and i teach about marketing business branding all that good stuff if that's what you like keep watching this video so just a little background story about me i know i've said this a couple times but some of you guys are new here i've been in the industry since i was 19 years old and i started in college it was a struggle not only because of time i had to split my time between being in college having a full-time job and also doing lashes on the side it feels like financially straining for me to invest into my lash business another thing is like family friends they don't really understand what you're doing especially you being in college so i just know how hard it is to struggle in the industry and on top of that this, i was a freshman in college i just moved to a completely different area where i knew no one so for me to start a lash business it was nerve-wracking to say the least because i'm like oh my god how am i going to start this business i don't know anyone but that's okay i always say this all the time you don't need friends or family to start a business they are not going to be your supporters it's going to be complete strangers you just have to get around getting to know new people that is completely okay another thing is especially your friends in college they will think your lash business is your plan b but how i operate we don't have plan b's around here plan b is just telling us that we don't have faith that plan a is going to work and when i came into the industry i seen that there were a lot of women thriving in their lash businesses i knew it was possible and you know it's possible too if you will feel like you're at a crossroads where you don't know if you need to continue with college or if you want to just do lashes full time that is your decision and your decision solely i can't sway you friends shouldn't be able to sway you your family shouldn't be able to sway you this is your life this is your business i would just say myself i like to live a life where i am fulfilled happy free <laughs> not miserable all the time because college was making me miserable restricted it's just not something that i wanted to do so college is not something that i continued with i just went into the lash industry i've been in the beauty industry for six years now ever since i was 19 and i am my most happiest i am my most free and it's just i'm living a life full of passion so that's just a little background story let's get into this story i seen a story on facebook where a girl said something that really touched me and i'm going to read it to you guys now i'm going to block out important information it says just coming here to vent i started lashing full-time march last year at age 17 and my business was doing very well i graduated high school semester early and was bringing in about 2500 dollars a month sometimes more which is really good for me as my prices were on the cheaper end for my area and i was a high school student with no extreme bills understandable i had enough money to cater to myself invest back into my business, take care of necessities, and still have money left over. I worked almost every day for hours on end, but I loved it because it was so rewarding to me. I even put myself through SD school for my license. I really did love lashing and still do. Cool. I lashed from home and my mom never really gave me an option when it came to college. I had no choice but to go. Our lease was ending after I graduated high school, and if I didn't go off, I would no longer have a location to do lashes and run my business. After the lease ended, her plan was to move three hours out. She is paying for school and housing, so I thought it was fair. I could still do lashes on campus, wrong, and advertising for seven weeks straight and nothing. I've only lashed my roommates. I'm getting super discouraged because all my established clients found new techs locally. I relocated to Miami for school and I don't know anyone here. So it's super hard to build clientele. I literally went from having a full clientele book, booked and busy every day to absolutely nothing in just two months. I'm thinking about just finishing the year out since it's already paid for and moving back home next year. Mom would think I'm crazy for giving up school to be a lash tech, but she doesn't understand. I know that I'm young, but I hate having to depend on others for finances and money, especially when I was doing so well by myself. It sounds bad, but I hate being broke. All I think about every day are new ways to make money. I was making money every day before. I just don't know what to do. I've applied to lash shops and studios around my area and nobody has gotten back. I've paid for advertisements on social media, but once finding out I'm located on a college campus, most no longer want to come deal with the hassle of parking and security, which I definitely understand. 
It should be a seamless and luxury experience. The girls on campus simply haven't been booking despite advertising. I'm literally considering fast food at this point, but it's so sad for me to have delved down to this point. I feel like I sacrificed everything for nothing. I just needed to vent. Advice will be great. Please be nice. I'm still learning and figuring out things day by day. So that's, that's the story right there. I want to say to this girl that a lot of people have been there and we've gotten our way out. So what I did is I created a business plan. If I was in this girl's situation, if I relocated to Miami for college and had to have done college all over again, exactly what I would do in my business to revive it, to make it succeed. Number one thing on your business plan, I wrote everything down, I already made notes. <laughs> I made notes for everything, so I'm just gonna read down my business plan for this situation. First things first is market research. Baby, a different city means different women, period. I don't know how else to say this, but now you have to move a little bit different because not every city is the same, not every woman is the same, and on top of being in a different city, you're in a college area as well where you're meeting people from all over the world. It's just not going to be something like you're used to. So of course, when you move to a new location, you move to college, everything is going to be different because everyone is going to be different. So don't feel bad if your business is not working, just stuff has changed for you. So you have to adjust your business to fit that. I was saying with market research, who is your target audience now compared to your old city to now? Given that your target audience is going to change, now your lash set may have to change, your customer service has to change, the way you advertise, that all has to be different because the women are different. So are you going to be servicing local women or are you going to be serving college students? When I started my lash business, I was doing lashes out of my room in a college area. Of course, I was only taking college students. I had some locals from here and there, but if you really wanna bypass the parking situation and all the other stuff, it will be best for you to target women who are already on your campus and there are millions of people on your campus so don't feel like not a good target audience because they are you have to think about what is the preferences of these women when i think of miami i think of hot sexy thrills like i think of all the good stuff the fun stuff I think of the beach and everything like that so those women may want lashes that fit their lifestyle they may want lashes that fit their face it really just depends so now you have to really just do some stalking really on social media see what people are doing locally in Miami, see what people are doing locally in the college area, see what they're already wearing, see what they already like, and try to adjust your lash set to fit to that. Because if there's no desire for your lash style, you have no business in the first place. You have to figure that out first, is what their preferences are. Now, what you're going to do for your market research is analyze your competitors. See who's already successful in the area and to see exactly why they're successful. What are they offering to their clients? How's their pricing? How is their advertising? What are people buying from them? It's good to analyze your competition because at least when you're looking at the competition in your area that's successful, you know what's working. Now you can see, okay, I see all of this, I see all of these lash businesses. Where is the gap? What are people not offering? What could I offer? Is this offer going to be something that clients actually desire, that actually want and they just cannot find in my area? So that's the first thing is market research. Now, the second thing is your business concept. Think about it like this. I always say your business does not belong to you, it belongs to your clients. You're in a new college area. How are you going to structure your business? How is your business going to be? What type of services you offer? Are you going to offer student packages and discounts, which I highly recommend and which is what I did. Your location, you have to figure out where your location is going to be. Does it fit the aesthetic that you're trying to give? Are your clients going to be okay with it? When I first started, I was doing lashes out of my bedroom. Wouldn't really complain, at least not to my face, but at the same time, we were all college girls. So I felt like they felt comfortable with just being in a personal space, getting their beauty services done. And they just felt like it was just more of a laid back atmosphere. Figure out exactly the vibes that you're going to give, exactly what your business is going to offer and how it's going to help people. The third thing is, is branding. I know a lot of people don't like to hear this, but you're probably going to have to rebrand simply because like I said before, your business does not belong to you. Your business belongs to your clients, your customers, the people you're helping, and that's who your business belongs to. However, the people that you've been servicing has changed. You're in a completely different city with different people. So now your whole business has to be branded around them because they want to feel like, okay, once I come across this business, this brand, this brand understands me, this brand is going to give me what I need. So now you have to rebrand. What I would do 
is I will create a catchy name that appeals to college students. With my business name, my business name is Jolie Fee Glambar. It means pretty girl Glambar in French, but I had glitter, I had pinks, and you know, it was called pretty girl. Like it was all about servicing young women and making them feel confident, making them feel pretty. Like what all my business was about, it was very pink, very glittery, and I attracted those young college students like me. Now, I would also change my messaging. When it comes to college students, I would emphasize on convenience. I mean, all you have to do is walk to someone else's dorm room in order to get your lashes done. Think about it on the opposite end. If some people don't wanna go through the hassle of parking and security to come on the campus, think about the people who are on campus who don't wanna go through the hassle of having to leave the campus. So I feel like that is a very convenient thing and that's something you can actually market, something you can actually advertise. Like, hey, you don't even have to go anywhere. Everything you need is right here. Your beauty services, you can get them right here. You don't have to go far. I would also advertise and emphasize on affordability simply because, girl, college students are broke. Period. How I know this? Because I was broke as a college student. And I know people are paying for things left and right. You want to emphasize these are affordable lashes. You can keep up with them. You can stay beautiful. You don't have to just worry about bills and all this other stuff. You can be beautiful at the same time. You can look cute at the same time. I would also emphasize on quality. Just because college students are broke does not mean that they're cheap, girlfriend. They want quality. So I would emphasize on quality. I use quality products. These lashes last you for however long. I would emphasize on that. Yes, you're getting a good deal, but you are getting very good lashes at a very convenient location. You wanna highlight special offers for students and make it feel like it's exclusive. So on my page, even though I was only getting college students, I had a special section for my college students on pricing. So let's say I made like a regular classic set 90. For college students, I made it 80 or 75. Like I said, even though I was only getting college students, it just makes it feel exclusive. Like they're, they're getting a deal because they're in college. It just works every time. Um, highly recommend that. Now, girlfriend, the sixth part is I would create a financial plan. Why this is so important. Like I said, girl, in college, we was all broke. I would create a budget to manage all my operational costs and also marketing because that stuff can get out of hand, especially when you're really, really trying to get clients. I will try to create a budget and also cut costs on stuff that I can cut costs on. What can you do to advertise your business that is free? Try to maximize on organic marketing and free stuff. There are local businesses in your area that tend to beauty needs. Go on their business page, find their followers, see people who are already interested in that service and interact with those type of people. What I mean by interact, go on their page, like a few pictures, you can comment stuff. I would not say harass these people or follow them or anything like that, but that's a great free way for people to know that, hey, this person does lashes and she seems to be in my area and all that other good jazz. You can do that on Twitter as well while you're connecting with people, but try to maximize on the free ways that you can advertise your business, at least in the very beginning. Keep track of all of your investments and keep track of the return for those investments. If you're using paid advertisements, make sure that you're getting an actual return on that investment. If you spend $50 on an ad, you want to make sure that you're booking at least $200, $300 worth of services or otherwise that $50 went to waste. If you spend $50, dollars and maybe you've got a lot of follows from that ad Look up with those people make sure that you're getting a return on that investment even if they may not buy from you now follow up with them show them that you care show them that you're here and they could also refer other people to you even though they haven't gotten a service done by you but offer them incentives and everything like that you want to make sure that you're getting a return on your investments otherwise it's money gone to waste and when you're a broke college student money can go to waste girlfriend so Focus on that. That's what I would do. It's just to lose track of money, especially in the beginning when you're investing a lot of money. So I would create a financial plan. Now, the seventh thing and the last thing I'll be doing is customer service. Your client experience, right? What I would do is I'll create a fun client experience all the way from the beginning to where your client even takes notice of your business. That starts the experience from the point they're connect, contacting with you, how they're booking the appointments. Is it easy? Your website, all that stuff is offering experience to the moment they leave your door and leave with their experience. You want to give them a phenomenal experience because not only incentivizing them on referring other people to you, you want raving fans, especially from college students. If a college student has a great, fun experience with you, they'll be like, they'll tell their friends, like, hey, 
I had a really good experience at this person. It was convenient, it was cute, my lashes turned out great, the owner was very nice and fun and friendly. They will talk to other people about that for free. So I would offer them a great experience, I would make them feel comfortable. Even though in, I was in my college dorm, I played spa music, I would play maybe even like Sabrina Claudio, even very something relaxing, comfortable, welcoming, raving fans, you want people to rave about you. And also, I would take feedback from the clients I do have now, simply because you want feedback, you want to know exactly what people, your clients are designing from you so you can also adjust your business and improve your business and to see what you could do better. Also, you'll be able to offer them stuff that they actually want in the future. And it just makes your business better. That is just my little plan, girls. That is it. If you are in college and you're struggling to find clients, especially after a new relocation, just know that it's possible. Yes, it is hard in the beginning. I'm not going to lie to you and say that it was easy. However, if you know that there's a solution to it, if you are struggling to feel like you don't know if you should stay in college or you don't know if you should be a lash tech full time, just know that there have been Women who's been in the industry for years and years and years, 10 years plus, they're successful, they're thriving. Then don't feel like if you just jump into doing lashes, it's going to fail for you, no. If you feel passionate about something, if you feel like your intuition is pointing you towards doing this, follow your intuition, girl. 